So today is October the 21st. Yesterday I posted a video showing Hive 7, which is a late season swarm. They were being overwhelmed by yellow jacket wasps, and a lot of them were getting through their Hive Gate entrance, and that's what this is. Only today, the 21st of October, at this moment it's only 51 degrees outside, and the yellow jacket wasps, wouldn't you know it, are getting free rain through that entrance with the odd worker bee running around not able to engage them and we're looking through a boroscope camera and we're looking at the solid bottom board from the inside and we're looking at the interior edges of the frames this is a single 10 frame deep we're also looking through a slatted rack which is two inches thick that's what these slats immediately adjacent to the camera are and then we see some dark comb up above and I can't tell if they have any nectar in there or not if they've already been robbed out it would not be unusual for these lower cells on these deep frames not to be full of honey this time of year there goes another yellow jacket wasp and people were stressed and they had some questions so in this video we're going to answer some of those questions and I'm also going to show you the interior and how the bees cope with yellow jacket wasps once they gain entry. Because remember, the hive gate system, although it's an entrance reducer of sorts, it is long channel and is not necessarily designed to stop robbing bees and yellow jacket wasps and others that would be predators to the hive at the entrance, but rather provide the bees with an opportunity to deal with those who do get in at the center of the hive, supposedly underneath the cluster where the bees would be warmer and able to defend themselves even on colder days. So here we are at 51 degrees Fahrenheit, the bees do cluster and that's where I assume they are up above and why these yellow jackets, most of them queens by the way, because in October that's what they're doing. They're coming in here unimpeded and the bees up above are too cold to come down and engage them the way they otherwise would later in the day. So it is kind of astonishing to see how many of these wasps were cruising around all over this bottom board and some of them are scooting up in between the slatted rack and I can only assume because I can't see it that they are making their way up near the cluster but probably not able to get through the cluster of honeybees up above. Now we see a yellow jacket directly in front of the camera here, not moving too good. Looks like it might have already interacted with some guard honeybees and maybe it's not faring too well. But another thing that uh, we get to do here with this scope is we can see what the interior looks like from the bees point of view and from the wasps point of view. And you can see that that metal plate all the way at the other end there has some light coming out underneath of it and this is what draws robber bees that are non-residents to the front and also invasive wasps here sometimes they get disoriented and they follow the light to the front as well and just end up uh, trapped up against that metal guard there where they can actually starve out at night or in some cases the bees even catch up with them there and they can sting them to death and i know this doesn't look good I mean, look at this one carrying a little protein pouch with it so when you see a wasp carrying a chewed up pile of animal protein like that, we know that they're still rearing their own brood as well. Because just as bees use pollen to as a protein resource to raise their brood, wasps use animal protein to raise their brood. And I believe that's a queen right in front of us there. And I don't think she's gonna make it. She seems to have a lot of difficulty clambering over the edge. So we're also going to answer some questions that uh, others had about who stings who, what uh, do the bees sting each other in a fight, for example, trying to defend their hive, and do they die from it? And can other bees die from bee venom? Well, we know that that is true, because when one honeybee stings another honeybee, they can uh, kill each other with their own venom. This is how a queen honeybee kills off competing queens. Now what I'm doing is cycling through some of the illumination levels here on the camera. 
also some of the reactions of the wasps and bees inside here are uh, probably due to the light that I've introduced through the back which would normally be completely dark other than the light sources that we see that's why this wasp is right up close to the lens we can also um, see how much light is coming through the hive gate itself so this is interesting don't be too frustrated because things are going to turn here once it gets uh, into the 60s which today it's uh, promised to be then you're going to see a change when the honeybees start to break their cluster more guards can come down and then you're going to see the tables turn on these wasps a little bit so all is not lost here if this hive had actually been robbed out completely we would not see this nice clean landing board here it's a solid landing board so debris does not fall through any screens and things like that therefore if they were robbed and defeated we would see the bottom board strewn with bits and pieces of wax and propolis as their stored honey and nectar and everything was robbed out robbers make a huge mess and this bottom board is pretty clean the other thing you notice is there are not a lot of dead bees and wasps here on this bottom board at this point that's going to change too now this honeybee does not have a good healthy posture her head is cocked to one side she seems to be wiggling around in a strange way as if she's irritated and she may have actually been stung by one of the wasps although most of the queens most of the wasps that have come in here at this time even though they have this cold weather advantage they're after nectar they're after high sucrose value high carbohydrate value resources and that's why they risk their lives to come in here and raid a beehive which appears at this time of day to be undefended So it's now 53 degrees and we're going to go back out again when the temperatures rise so we can see what the differences are. Now at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, I think we're going to see a little difference in the bees ability to defend themselves. We do have storms coming in, rain is on the way, we have heavy overcast skies, which generally results in more defensive colonies. And this shows the backyard apiary here. By the way, this is the only one that is being pilfered by these yellow jackets right now this is not the storm swarm this is colony hive number seven the storm swarm that a lot of people have asked about is to the left of this colony and they are still holding their own that was a well populated hive this is by far the smallest colony of bees in the apiary right now so i'm also going to show you a view through the entrance so let's travel in here and there we have a yellow jacket wasp engaging with a guard bee so notice now we have a lot more guard bees out the temperatures have warmed up we do have uh, foragers heading out from this colony and there are pollen resources being brought in as well which indicates that there is some brood in here often when a colony loses a queen for example they also lose their desire to defend the colony which is interesting so these bees although they're small in number appear to be very capable and they also seem to be queen right so i think we're okay not too long ago we inspected the hive and we found out that there is a queen of course she's marked and they had brood but of course brood this time of year is tapering down but this shows you what any insect going through the hive gate entrance would see and you can also see that the surface is somewhat textured so the bees can get their footing here and this is the point where they would cross over and get into the hive. We also look for bits and pieces of remnants of cast-offs on the bottom. I don't see any dead Varroa mites either, which is a good sign. So now that we've seen the entrance, we're also going to go and take a look in through the back of the hive so we can see what's going on. But it seems like that yellow jacket just got in, gets over the lip, and she's home free, right? Well, not so fast. Let's get out of here and go through the back of the hive and see what's going on. So I have these quarter 20 threaded screws. They're placeholders, so I can do oxalic acid vaporization if I need to, but they're just handy for putting in this house scope. So 
So now things have changed. More bees on deck. We've got dead and dying bees as well. We've got dead and dying wasps. Now keep in mind that the yellow jacket wasps are not the only things that would like to rob out another hive this time of year. We have uh, honeybees that would like to raid the hive. So another question that I received was, why are they attacking some of the other honeybees and not just the wasps? Is there any chance those are also robber bees? Well, that's exactly what they are. Because when those bees get in the hive too, they're unfamiliar. And uh, sometimes they panic when they run into the guard bees here and they rush towards the front, forget all about the hive gate, which is how they got in. And instead they head towards the light that you see farther away. So now we've got uh, plenty of guard bees here with the will to fight. So someone else asked me, do they release some kind of pheromone that lets the other bees know that they're being attacked? Well, absolutely they do. So they release a pheromone, which is a threat pheromone. And this is what we hope to avoid, of course, when bees get upset with us. They release pheromones when they sting. They also have a mandibular pheromone that they can release. The guard bees do, and it does summon the other bees to help them, which is what's going on right here with that yellow jacket wasp. Several bees are working on her, so it's no longer a one-on-one -on -one situation for these guard bees. Because when the hive is threatened, just like if you were to open up a hive and treat it rough and start banging things around, you would get more than just the guard bees. You get every bee that's capable of flying and stinging. And here we see that as the yellow jackets come over this edge on the inside, they're being thoroughly attacked by the honeybees. Now I wasn't able to get the scope up in between the frames to see what's going on up above, but what's going on down here is pretty darn convincing. And this is what uh, the hive gate is designed to do. Channel them in, and if they do decide to come all the way in and not just turn around and run right back out the opening, which is what they should do, they're gonna face uh, guard bees inside the hive, and this is where they're really gonna be dealing with uh, problems there. That yellow jacket to the right is wishing it had gone somewhere other than this hive at this point. We see that these bees are not happy. Some of them are flying at my camera, of course. Remember, it's illuminated. We have uh, a dying honeybee there, dying honeybee to the right. Yellow jackets seem to move faster, trying to get what they need and get out. And of course, the whole goal here is when those scouts get in here, we don't want them to return to their yellow jacket nest. So once they come in, if they make the mistake of coming all the way into the hive, their chances of making it out are much reduced when the temperatures are up. Now, as we saw earlier, though, when the temperatures are low, the wasps can still fly even when the honeybees cannot. And that gives them that early advantage, but they also have to get through the cluster. And the whole point also of the hive gate there is to deliver the wasps into the hive under the cluster. Now, there's a two inch standoff here with a slatted rack. If the slatted rack were not there, then the brood frames would be brought lower, but I think the slatted rack may provide an advantage also to that uh, cluster of bees up above, both in summer and winter. This is a space where a lot of the unemployed workers will hang out instead of bearding on the front of the hive. And the space is apparently big enough, even for these yellow jacket wasps, to fly in it. And you see a lot of them take to the air in here. And just a reminder, everything we're seeing here would be in darkness with the exception of the light that would be coming through this entrance. And I'm going to try to get the scope up to the front so we can see kind of what bodies are up there, what bees are located there, and what their condition is. And we see some confused yellow jackets cruising around trying to find the exit. They're not as good at remembering different angles and entrances as honeybees are. Now, this wasp right here is being ganged up on pretty thoroughly, and it's trying to sting the bees. Likewise, the honeybees are stinging the wasp, and it is just an exchange of venom until one of them is overwhelmed. And when bees sting other bees, and when bees sting wasps, when wasps sting bees, they don't lose their stingers, so these bees are not dying because they've lost their stingers. They're dying because they've been injected with venom.
They do the best they can to bite holes in the wings, to chew every part of the wasp that they can. They're just not good at dispatching the bits and pieces. But uh, they're definitely getting their message across that this isn't the place to be to get your resources for winter. That's what the queen wasps are trying to do. Just fatten up so they can go and get through winter as a solitary wasp in some decomposing material somewhere or in your tool shed under a bunch of wood. They like to hide in wood piles and things like that also. Where the honeybees get to depend on one another for their warmth and they need the honey, the carbohydrate as their energy resource to warm the hive through winter. And they've also got some pollen stored up there which will help them feed their winter brood. But the brood is in decline this time of year. And as I mentioned uh, in the other video, we're going to make sure that this colony has plenty of resources. We're going to have to feed them. They were collected in September, which a lot of people wouldn't even bother hiving up. But it provided a great opportunity to have an underdog colony of bees so that we could observe how well they hold their own uh, with robbing attempts, but primarily, of course, with yellow jacket attacks. Now, someone said that European hornets can get through these entrances. We have not had very many European hornets uh, here this year, and even the bald faced hornets, which are really just in the yellow jacket family, they're wasps. Uh, we've only seen a couple of those specimens this year, so the biggest numbers have been with the yellow jacket wasps. And the Asian giant hornets are too big to fit through the hive gates to begin with, so those are not a concern here. We have had uh, people write in from Washington State that said that these hive gate units are definitely improving and saving them from the losses they normally experience with the yellow jacket attacks. Uh, that's an area where it's really being tested. And of course this hive has a lot of things stacked against it. Fewer numbers, smaller cluster. We're probably talking about 8,000 bees in this colony, which is not huge. The absolute rock bottom minimum would be 5,000 bees just so they could have a distribution of labor and still hope to survive winter. But uh, later when things are done and the wasps have stopped attacking everything, when the weather cools enough to wipe out their nests, uh, we won't have these problems. But we're looking around here, there's a lot of dead bees on the bottom. And notice how different the floor is now than it was earlier the same morning when it was only in the 50s. Look at all these dead bees here. Some of this is normal um, attrition, bees that died out overnight maybe. Others, because uh, you can see that they're older, they're kind of chewed up, they're falling apart. So they will be taken out by what's called undertaker bees that will clean up and get rid of everything. Notice that the first time we cruised around and looked at this interior, there were not all these dead bees there. And uh, we've got a yellow jacket up near the front there that would like to be somewhere else about now. And now the bees, of course, are chasing the camera a little bit. Here goes a yellow jacket flying right up above. That will be a mistake too. So as I said yesterday, um, one of the ways that we would know, just looking from the outside, without having a scope like this to look at the interior, you want to get out there early in the morning because at night skunks cruise around and clean up dead bees and wasps and things like that. So we want to see what the undertaker bees threw out. So near the end of this video, I'll show you in front of the landing board and we'll look to see if there are dead wasps, honeybees, there's another yellow jacket being engaged there at the top left. Uh, we're gonna see how many dead yellow jackets there are out front. The bees are able to drag out dead bees and detritus through these uh, entrances. So the hive gates don't impede swarming, queen mating, um, cleaning up and hauling dead things out and debris and things like that. They do all of the same duties through it, so it's not a problem there. And as I mentioned, there are 21 
colonies in this apiary. And uh, this is the only one currently really being invaded by yellow jackets. We have hive gate units on half of those hives. So the next thing coming up, of course, will be how well they get through winter and what that's like. We're going to look at uh, dead bees that might accumulate in the hive gates. We're going to show you during winter how to keep those cleaned out. Cleaning out dead, we dead bees from all of your hives is going to be very important in winter if you get heavy snow. And if you don't already know, this is the northeastern United States, the state of Pennsylvania, and we get heavy snows here. So it'll be a great opportunity to evaluate these entrances right through winter to see how the bees manage moisture and air circulation and how they haul out, of course, dead bees. And I may stick uh, this borescope in here and uh, get looks at the interior even during winter. It's something I haven't done in the past. It's kind of an afterthought this morning. I thought, wow, I have that O-scope. Why don't I just go out and see what's going on inside and see what happens when these yellow jackets come through the hive gate. Well, now we know. And it isn't pretty. In a perfect world, those wasps would mind their own business and all the bees would have to do is bring in resources. And right now we still have cosmos in bloom and some asters. So all the honey, nectar, pollen, everything they bring in now this time of year is just for the hives, but they're definitely impacted by raids like this. So now let's go outside and see what's going on. And this is right in front of Hive 7. So this is the same hive that was being attacked yesterday. I did have to pull some of the grass out of the way to get a look at uh, bees and wasps that are dead in front of the colony. Some of these were probably here yesterday. I didn't really look for them. But some of these are fresh kills. How do I know that? Well, they're still twitching. They're still moving. So these were actually probably stung a lot by the bees inside the hive and flew out on their own or crawled out on their own and fell on the ground. We do see the bees trying to drag out wasps, kicking and squirming, and a lot of these have their uh, stingers extended. So you can tell, and that's a paper wasp right there, one of the more calm wasps that doesn't generally give the honeybees much of a problem, but we have yellow jackets all over. Some of these dead uh, honeybees look like they're a few days dead. They don't look necessarily fresh. There's a drone dead center there. Just watching that wasp to see if it's healthy. And again, we've got the different yellow jackets here. Bits and pieces of bees. There's a yellow jacket that's not looking too healthy. Probably got stung several times. And the numbers look good to me. In other words, it's not one dead bee for every dead yellow jacket. And these are yellow jackets. A lot of them are queens. Now, I know some entomologist is going to chime in and tell me what they are, but I think most of these are already queen yellow jackets, and they're a little bit larger than the standard workers. That one's doing donuts. So it's probably been stung pretty good. That one's got its stinger out. That one's legs are still moving. So the venom acts on them over a period of time, apparently. And uh, here's a honeybee worker pretty dried out so that doesn't look like a fresh kill that might just be clean out now look at the wings on this one they have definitely been chewed during the attack inside the hive there there's part of a honeybee abdomen all dried out looking again those don't look fresh it's probably been out there in the rain and so on that one looks completely dead but I would say this one's kind of dragging its hind foot there it's trying to revive itself, but uh, it doesn't look like it can fly. And again, I've never noticed a honeybee stinger sticking out of the abdomen. They try to sting between the plates here on their abdomen. You see that most often. That one's got its wings twisted. And there's one back here in the grass. Some of them are, looks like they were just pushed off the end of the hive and they drop there. That one's got its stinger extended. Looks like a little glow of venom, maybe even, on the end of it. There's another one down there. So this is what uh, we would expect to see when a colony is capable of defending itself. Um, 
if the colony were losing out, what you would see out here would be a disproportionate number of dead honeybees because even um, raider honeybees end up locked in fights and they sting each other. So we see a bunch of dead robber bees and then you would also see resident bees that are killed when they get overwhelmed. Look at the stinger here sticking out and this uh, next one on its back there. Can't tell what it's up to. They just uh, are not having a good day. But there again, they were attacking a honeybee hive that uh, is equipped with a hive gate entrance. Now it doesn't mean that other colonies of bees can't defend themselves. So if you don't have a hive gate this time of year and if they're being attacked by wasps or if they're in jeopardy of being robbed by honeybees, you definitely want to put a very small entrance on that hive until the attacks uh, wear off. Because here's the problem. Once the wasps gain entry, once they get a resource, whatever it is, whatever they're after, and if they can get away and get back to their parent nest, then they bring others with them. And so the pressure is on, the pressure increases, and the more time and energy gets spent defending the colony, not to mention the loss of bee numbers just through stings and biting and fighting. And here goes another yellow jacket there. And as I'm narrating this, it's pouring rain outside. So once again, the bees lost their opportunity to forage. So another reason why some of your colonies really are going to need to be fed. This time of year, you would use a heavy syrup. So it's two to one by weight if you're just feeding sugar syrup until we really get into sub-zero temps and no syrup at all. And then you're back to dry feed. There are winter patties you could feed, but we just put dry sugar in the wrap around feeders on top. And we inspected the feeders and they did not have any wasps in them. So this was an issue. They were just attacking the frames themselves and the comb itself. So thank you for watching. I hope this helped answer some of the questions people had. And it also shows you that hive number seven is still in the game. Thanks for watching.